Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, Big Paul here today with a hot take for you. We're going to talk about vegetables and a bodybuilding diet. And do you actually need them? I think they interfere with digestion and cause all sorts of problems. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this one, be upset by this one. But I'm going to dig into my reasons why I think vegetables aren't conducive towards bodybuilding and building a large physique, especially in the off season. We're going to dig into my thoughts on that in just one second. So last week, Jay Cutler put out a video on his channel. I think it was a Jay Walking episode, and he sent out an email talking about vegetables and bodybuilding and how he almost never ate vegetables. And I paraphrase here, he gave some examples of why, but he talked about, essentially what he said is in the off season, if you're eating enough food to get huge, it's really difficult to fit vegetables in there and maximize your digestion and be able to get all the food down. You need to get out in the off season to grow. And this is what I have found to be true. And I know this is going to upset some people, but once you hit a certain size and you want to continue growing and you have to push food volume, having all that extra fiber and food volume that comes from eating vegetables really screws up your digestion. It's going to slow things down and it makes it impossible to eat enough calories to grow. I know that's going to set some pants on fire. People are going to be upset by this one. And this is a thing that I try to remind people about all the time when it comes to bodybuilding. We are not eating to optimize health. Now, granted, we don't want to be stupid with our diet and do reckless things that are going to jeopardize our health. We're going to try to minimize that. But at some point, you do have to take some calculated risk if you want to be a mass monster like Nick Walker or Derek Lunsford or whatever. And if fitting vegetables into a bulking diet, an off-season diet, is damn near impossible. I'll give you an example. On you know, Sometimes my high-carb days, they're not this high right now, but at points I have reached up to 1,200 grams of carbs on high-carb days. And it, when, when you take a step back and you think about that, if you're having 1,200 grams of carbs on a high day, or let's just say a thousand. Let's go with thousand for a nice even a number. That is twenty cups of rice. I can't eat twenty cups of rice, so I'll mix in some simple sugars in there to to get that all down. Now, how in the hell if I can't eat the twenty cups of rice? If I'm struggling with that, and I'm having to eat things like gummy bears and breakfast cereal and fruit juice to get to the thousand grams of carbs, how in the hell do you think I'm going to fit broccoli? cauliflower, salads, and whatnot in there. It's not going to happen. So one of the things that you have to think about when you're in an off-season diet and you want to maximize your ability to push food in an off-season is you have to pick foods that are easy to digest, that have low volume and high calorie content when you're pushing things uh, to the limit. Not saying, once again, not saying this is the healthy way to go. Uh, but there are things you can do to mitigate it. So the the thing I always get is, well, you're not getting enough micronutrients. You're not getting enough fiber in. Well, we can work around that. I use a fiber supplement at the end of the day. I'll take usually just Metamucil. I'll get my daily requirements for fiber. fiber and at the end of the day, I'll, I'll use a serving of Metamucil. And then I will do a serving of a greens powder at the end of the day. I also take multivitamins and various uh, other supplements to get my minerals and micronutrients in throughout the day to make sure that I have those things covered for health purposes. 
And I, when I get my blood work done, I will check for micronutrient deficiencies. Not, not all, you know, not every blood panel, but a couple times a year, I will check for that to make sure that I uh, have enough micronutrients in my diet uh, to to be healthy. So that's a way to work around it. Now, on the flip side, when we shift to contest prep, this is when you can use more vegetables. You're going to be starving. Your food volume. Um, is going to go down so you can use vegetables as a way to increase food volume when you're on contest prep. So I, rather than eating the carbs that I was eating before, I will sub rice or, or cereal or fruit juice. I'll start subbing in vegetables at that time to keep myself full and satiated. So that is a way to work around starving yourself on contest prep. Now, it's not going to completely get rid of the hunger, but that is the shift that we make. So a large portion of the off season, I'm not running vegetables. I'm not eating vegetables. I just can't fit it in. And I, Jay Cutler made the argument uh, on his jaywalking episode that if you're eating enough to grow, there is no possible way that you could fit a bunch of vegetables in your diet during the day. It's going to slow down your digestion if you're eating every two to three hours and you throw a bunch of fiber in on top of that, you know, a bunch of hard to digest things, fresh vegetables, carrots, broccoli, uh, maybe salad or stuff. You're not going to be ready to eat again in two to three hours and you're going to end up with bloating and distension, things like that. We want simple, easy to digest foods in the off season if we're going to maximize growth. And like I said, we can put in fiber, we can do other things like that, greens, powders, supplements to sort of mitigate some of the unhealthy nature of doing that. And when you think about it, the average fat American is not eating vegetables anyway. We're, we're even still, even still with this, we're keeping saturated fats low on a bodybuilding diet, we're supplementing EFAs, we're making sure that we're getting our micronutrients in, albeit from supplements. And we're getting our fiber in from supplements. Even still, with the increased food volume, eating simple sugars, uh, eating uh, foods that are fast processing, easy to digest, we're still probably healthier than the fat, average fat, lazy American who's living off of fast food and just eating trash all day long, processed trash. I, I guarantee you that it's probably still a healthier diet than what that person is eating. I know people are going to be upset by this take, but I it's just if you want to get huge, sometimes you have to make some sacrifices. And I guarantee you that the guys that are mass monsters, especially the ones that struggle with diet or struggle with appetite, sorry, are probably not eating a crap ton of vegetables. There's just no way they're doing it. All right, folks, I'm sure some of you are going to think I'm crazy. Let me know in the comments section below. Give me your thoughts on maximizing digestion and lowering food volume and eating high density, high calorically dense foods in the off season. Let me know what you think about that. If I'm completely off base, if I'm completely crazy, if you want to support me, support my sponsor, First Detachment. Discount code is AB10. Link is in my uh, video description below if you want to go over there and check out their supplements. Thank you for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.